The reason I think why we have to pay more attention to how authoritarian governments use the web, uh, there are two reasons. I think reason number one uh, is because uh, I actually believe that the internet can be uh, a powerful force for democratization. You know, I do not reject the capacity of the internet to contribute to promoting democracy and democratic values and human rights. The problem, of course, is how do you allocate resources wisely? Right? And uh, that process of allocation of resources and coming up with a strategy to use the internet as a tool of democratization requires certain assumptions about uh, you know, what should be done and how internet control works. Uh, you know, if you look at how we thought about internet control five years ago or 10 years ago, much of it was very simple. We thought that governments, all they do is uh, ban websites or filter websites, right? Uh, so all the money that the American government and American foundations and European governments, uh, all that money went into building tools that basically provide you access to banned websites, <laughs> right? Now, however, we see the certain governments are doing many more things. You know, they engage in cyber attacks, right, which make certain websites completely unavailable from everywhere, even from America. So if you build that tool, which allows you access to banned websites from China, but the original website is unavailable because of a cyber attack, the tool is worthless, right? So, um, and this just shows you that the way in which we think about internet control and the way in which we can identify many of its facets will eventually determine where, we, where and how we allocate resources. And this is a very important question given the growing commitment of the American government to this issue. Right? We all, some of you may have heard about Hillary Clinton giving a big speech on internet freedom yesterday where she said that uh, the United States government has spent $25 million on supporting these causes and want to spend a similar amount in, uh, in the next year. So uh, there are a lot of questions, very pragmatic, logistical questions that need to be settled, but we first need to figure out the intellectual framework for even how we think about these issues. And the second reason why I think we should care about how authoritarian governments use the web, but also how uh, it makes the lives of many dissidents and protesters harder is because there are a lot of Western companies that are basically complicit in um, you know, suppressing and not promoting internet freedom. Right? Uh, again, to turn to Egypt, the Egyptian government actually had the capacity to monitor all the traffic that was passing through its networks and to very closely watch what its opponents were doing by using technology that was sold to them by an American company called Naros, which is actually owned by Boeing. Right? Um, and that's just one example. The same company sells similar technology to Saudi Arabia. Right? So we are in this very interesting situation where some of the American companies, whether it's Facebook or Google or Twitter, are actively used uh, to topple these regimes, while some other American companies supply the technology that these very regimes use to suppress the, uh, the, the protesters and the protest. And I think this is something that uh, we need to be very well aware of. Even if you look to Twitter and Facebook and Google, what you'll notice is that I think the revolutions in Tunisia and Egypt succeeded uh, not because of Facebook and Twitter, but in spite of them. Uh, right? They do not offer a very secure environment to an activist. And many activists have been very vocal about the fact that they want Facebook, for example, to offer them the opportunity to uh, work there under pseudonyms, using false names. Because if they set up an anti-government campaign in China using their real names, chances are the government will come and arrest them the following day. Right? So they want to use pseudonyms. Facebook, on the other hand, doesn't want to allow that. They just deleted, for example, the account of a prominent Chinese activist precisely because he was using a pseudonym. Right? And they don't want to do it simply because it will harm their business interests. It will dilute their marketing base. It will make it much harder for them to sell precise and targeted advertising if they start having all those fake accounts uh, spread Besides, Facebook does not want uh, to um, be in conflict with the Chinese government because Mark Zuckerberg just visited China and they're thinking of expanding there. Right? Again, so there are a lot of business tensions here that I think need to be resolved.